Welcome to Pokemon Infinite Fusion, the game where you can fuse any two Pokemon together and create whatever you want. Wanna do some unholy fusions like Vaporeon together with Lopunny? Sadly enough, that's possible. But today we'll be taking on this amazing fan game with only poison type fusions. What do I mean by this? Well, every time I fuse a Pokemon, it has to have the poison type on it, otherwise I won't be able to use it. Before we jump into it, don't forget to subscribe, because there's way more content where this came from. Let's also try to smash 6,623 likes. And with all of that out of the way, let's pollute our way through Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Starting out, you can immediately choose your own age as you're filling out your application to become a Pokemon trainer. Then you wake up into your house and your mother hands you a letter saying that you've been approved by the Pokemon League. So you can go to the local professor, which is Professor Oak, as we're playing through the Kanto region. But this isn't just a regular Kanto region, a lot of things have been changed as you will see later on. After naming our rival Bakugo, we go straight into the tall grass, but Professor Oak stops us and gives us the choice between Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle. I decide to pick Charizard because I think he could make for the coolest fusions. Then you immediately get to fight your rival who already has a fused Pokemon because no starter Pokemon gets left behind here as we're battling against this Squirtzar. We easily win with a couple of scratches, head to Viridian City, go to the Pokemon Mart and pick up Oak's Parcel. But we get a little extra too, we get some DNA splicers that you can use to fuse Pokemon just like Hiram did in Pokemon Black and White too. After delivering the package we get our first set of balls which we use to capture a Nidoran male. Then we go into our bag, grab our DNA splicers out of it, and get to choose who we turn our Charmander Nidoran fusion into. You always get two choices when you fuse Pokemon, but only when their silhouette is green are they actually compatible with each other. When Pokemon aren't compatible, they turn into absolute abominations that you don't really want to see. So I'm going to try and avoid that as much as possible. After crafting Nidomander as our very first fusion, we then get the choice between the ability of Nidoran or Charmander, as well as their their natures and movesets, so everything gets combined, not only the Pokemon. Anyway, after grabbing a Weedle in Viridian Forest, as well as a Nidoran female, I then fused them with a Mankey to create Manran and Weedle with Pidgey to create Piddle. We battled our way through the bugs of Viridian Forest and eventually reached Pewter City. Here I decided to enter the Pokemon Center, and there is always a guy at the top floor that will allow you to randomize your game. From wild Pokemon to trainer Pokemon to items, he can do anything. Thing. But for now, I'm going to leave this feature alone. I don't want to be running into pseudo-legendaries and legendary Pokémon that can just sweep the game for me. Another cool new feature is hotels that are located in almost every single town. You can use these to either advance through the day if you need it to be a specific time. But way more interesting is the people in these hotels. They always need help with some kind of quest, and once you complete them, you get amazing rewards. So make sure to help out the good folks that are hiding in these hotels. I also went to check out the museum to see if anything had changed. They now have way cooler skeletons like the one from Black and White, but you can also resurrect your fossil Pokemon here now. No reason to go all the way to Cinnabar Island anymore. But hey, that's not the main reason we're in Pewter City, let's go and take on Mr. Brock. Even though he seems to be light years ahead of me, I still went into the battle without hesitation. But to make it harder on the player, you're also only going to be allowed to bring as many Pokemon as the gym leader uses himself, so I only brought two Pokemon against Brock's two Pokemon. His first Pokemon, GOG, went down very quickly with two double kicks from my Manran. And his ace, Dignix, trapped my Manran with a bind so I couldn't switch out and then finished me off with Dig. Luckily for me, my double kick did enough damage so that my next Pokemon could just Finish him off with another double kick. First gym badge acquired. And once you defeat a gym, you don't only get the gym badge, you also get a premium wonder trade ticket. You can use these at the Pokemon Center to wonder trade with a random NPC from across the world. I didn't want to abuse this feature, so I would only use the premium tickets I get from the gym. I wouldn't buy any extras. But sadly enough, I can't even use my first wonder trade because it's a Wooper Feebas fusion, which isn't poison type. With a little bit more grinding, my Piddle evolved into Piduna. Then we find some people that are having quite a lot of trouble. They got attacked by some bullies in Mount Moon that are stealing people's Pokemon. Luckily, Brock comes along to take care of the injured Pokemon and he sends me into the cave to go and investigate. We quickly find out that the Team Rocket organization are behind this, so we'll have to try and stop them while Brock goes back to his gym. But first, I grab myself a Zubat, another poison type I can use to fuse, and I head back to the Pokemon Center and buy this guy's Magikarp. And that's when I created Zuzu the Zucarp. 
I can't wait to see what this turns into. Piduna then evolves into Pidrill, which isn't really compatible with each other anymore, so we're going to have to either evolve it again or find a new target for Pidrill to fuse with. Manran also evolved into Manrina, and our last evolution was Nidomelian. At the end of Mount Moon, we run into Giovanni and his goons. They're trying to fuse three Pokemon together to make even stronger Pokemon so that it can take over the world. Just as we're about to jump in, they send a bystander to attack us. After dealing with him, the experiment seems to fail and they leave everything behind. The reason they conducted this in Mount Moon though is because they needed Moonstones in order to power their machine. Luckily for us, we managed to bump him at the right time and scare them off. We get our fossil pick, and I decided to go with a dome fossil because Kabutops just seems like it could fuse with way cooler stuff than Almastar. We reach Cerulean City shortly after and go straight to the Nugget Bridge to take on Bakugo again. His team has buffed up quite a bit since the last time we met him. Luckily I was able to take out his first Pokemon Nidato with a few rock tombs of my own Nidorino fusion. Pidrill took care of his Squirtzor with some Twin Needles, and after our two Mankey fusions clashed together, we easily took out the rest of his team. After he ditches us, we go and grab an Ekans, and fuse it together with a Sandshrew to create Ekshrew. Since they're both Fire Red and Leaf Green exclusives, I thought they would fit pretty well together. I also grab a Bellsprout and an Oddish, and while I didn't have a candidate to fuse with Oddish yet, on the other hand, I did fuse Bellsprout together with an Abra. Pidrill then evolved into Pidrill, and then I reached the end of the round and went to Bill's Lighthouse. This time he wasn't fusing himself with a Clefairy, but with a Rhydon. He's researching even more into the fusion phenomenon, so that he'd hopefully one day perfect Pokemon and human fusion. But for now though, we're going to have to help him out, because his thick Rhydon fingers can't put in the code into the computer anymore. He's very grateful for turning him back, and we grab ourselves the SS ticket. But before we go to the SSN, we first have to take on Misty. But before we take on Misty, we have to power up our team, so let's evolve Abra into Catabell and Zuzu into Zudos. These are also the two Pokemon I'll be taking into the Misty fight, but her team was laughably bad. Starting out with a Jigladeen, who gets overpowered immediately by by my Catabell, and Zuzu kills Audio with just a single wing attack. Second gym badge acquired without any problems. So let's power up our team even more so that we can easily take on Lieutenant Surge as well. I gave a Moonstone to my Nidomelian to evolve him into a Nidomelian again, but this time it's Nido King and Charmeleon that are fused. Then it was time to fuse Oddish with a Poliwag to create the super cute Polish. I did another wonder trade, and this time I actually got a poison type. A Ralt Spinarak fusion, psychic, and poison type. And it actually doesn't look as bad as I thought. R Slash also looks super good as the final evolution from Arbok and Sand Slash. But the evolutions don't stop there. We also grab Polyum, Kirak, who now looks like something I'd never want to find under my bed. But once it evolved again into Kyrados, it actually looked alright. Goldos, however, definitely gave a blow to morale as he doesn't look as good as his predecessor. Last but not least, is Polyum and this time he kinda looks like a potted plant that has become cursed. I then went to the SSN and straight to the kitchen to pick up some crabby legs. Then you have 30 seconds to bring them to the guy in the hotel because he wants them warm and steamy hot. Once he's satisfied with his meal, he allows you to learn crab hammer from him. Sadly enough, nobody can learn it. Anyway, time to meet up with Bakugo again because he's always ready for a fight. But his entire team was just a sweep with Zuzu. Wing attacking his Pidato, same goes for his War Sour, and Starbra and Manicade were also no match. We pick up the HM for cut from the captain and cut down Lieutenant Surge's pesky tree. I go into the fight with Armo, Abra, and Morgan, but I only expected to use one of these three. And I was absolutely right, because Armo has sparred ground type, his entire team could do nothing against me. We took out Volby, Picolet, and Rybuzz, all with a couple of magnitudes. We grab our gym badge and our wonder trading tickets and get out of there. We snatch our free bicycle and use a water stone on Polyum to evolve him into Polyum again, but this time with fists. Then I went back to the Pokemon Center and talked to the randomizer guy. I wasn't running into many poison types anymore and I really wanted to fuse some more. So I turned up the randomnessness and found a couple of really cool Pokemon. This let me create an Arena, the Abomination, and Nindrill, a surprisingly very good looking fusion of Beedrill and Ninkeda. But when he evolved they weren't compatible anymore but I wasn't really looking for a Ninjask Beedrill fusion, it was the other one I needed. 
Shedrill, a bug poison type with the Wonder Guard ability. And they also look really cool together, so they might be unstoppable. Before entering Rock Tunnel, I also got myself Gardados as the final evolution of Gardevoir and Ariados, and then I slowly but surely made my way through Rock Tunnel and into Lavender Town. Here I once again checked out the Pokemon Center, and also found out that there is a move reminder here, so if you really want to fuse two Pokemon together, and you wanted to relearn some moves, just head to this guy. The Pokemon Tower was our next destination, and once again, Bakuko was waiting for us. Since we did kill his Raticate fusion last time, he seems to be very agitated. Once again, Zuzu was able to deal with his Nidato by just using a single Ice Fang. Starbra went down to wing attacks, but for his very own Gyarados, I had to swap out, because his Intimidate made me do next to no damage. So I brought in Armo, went for the Thunder Fang, once again one-shotted it. His last Pokemon was Warsaur, but he couldn't handle the raw power of my crunch. But once he was defeated, something weird happened. Team Rocket is interrogating an old man, because they want to know how to make Master Balls, and this guy apparently knows how to so they take him upstairs into the tower but we can't go into this spooky tower without a self scope so we have to go and get that first so we go to Celadon City to pick up an Eevee but immediately trade it away for an Elekid. I know, I truly love my Pokemon. Then I go to the big department store to pick up all sorts of rare stones so I can evolve more Pokemon. And I started fishing into the polluted lake and fished up a Grimer, another poison type we'll be able to fuse with. But I didn't have anything that was compatible with it so I just fused it with Aeron for now. We get to see the final form of Froggy 2, Polyplume, and we also got to see Catabelle. With these new additions, I went to Erika's gym, but there was something wrong. She was standing in front of the sewer system, asking for some help because she had seen Team Rocket going in there. So it's time to make our hands dirty and go through the sewers with Erika. She fights together with you and heals up your Pokemon after every battle, so this is a good grinding spot. After kicking down some wooden planks and evolving Morgan into his final form, Nidoizard, who does look really cool and reminds me a little bit of the Dragon from Shrek, we also evolve our Eren Grimer Fusion into a Leuk, and he Eventually we reach the end of the sewer system where Giovanni has already beaten up Erika and we are next. He can't let us meddle with his plants any longer, so it's time for him to stop me here and now. He starts out with an Arnix. With our newly evolved Gru, I immediately scare him off into Ryras. But that thing also couldn't take an Iron Head, so he immediately swapped out back into Arnix, which once again got destroyed by Iron Head. But then he brought in Honkan, a normal ghost type that isn't going to go down easy. At first I tried to take him out with Morgan, but that really didn't work out and I almost went down. So I swapped out into Zuzu, went for the Aqua Tail, and that could finish it off. Ryras also came out again, but one more Aqua Tail was one more win for me. After Giovanni flees his hideout, Erika tells me to come and challenge her at her gym and also congratulates me on my win, so we waste no more time and head straight over there. Her gym has been completely overhauled into a maze, so after making my way through there, it was time to challenge her. But since she is a grass type gym leader, I don't think our poison types are going to have any problem. And I was absolutely right, Exec Duo went down to some fire punches from Morgan, just like the next Pokemon, Tanape. The last one on our team was Vilebell, a fusion of Vileplume and Victory Bell, but this boy once again stood no chance against my fire punches. So that's four gym badges under my belt, time to do another evolution. And this time it's my very own Victory Bell fusion, Alabel. Actually it doesn't look all that bad, I really like this guy's new look. I beat up some Team Rocket Grunts that were guarding Saffron City, so now we can freely go in and out ourselves. Inside I even found a Team Rocket Grunt that was willing to sell me Slowpoke Tail for only 10 grand. That's way less than the guy in Johto charges, but that's not why we're here. First, we take on the Karate Master. Then I pick up his Hitmontop as a free gift and name him Beyblade. And even in its final form, Aguk is not compatible with Mux, so we're going to have to find something else for him. I decided to fuse him with Pidgeotto to create Pidgeot, a very cursed looking boy. But as we evolved him, he once again was not compatible with Pidgeot. So instead, I fused him with Electabuzz and created Electug. A pretty cool looking guy, but probably not something that's going to stick around for long. I also finally got Nidoqueen out of my box and fused it with a Blaziken to create Nidoikin. 
I thought a blue Blaziken was going to look cool, but not a big fan of this one. Then we headed to the top of Pokemon Tower where we fought a Genwak along the way. Finally, a real haunted Marowak. Taking care of it was pretty easy, and we reached Mr. Fuji in no time. He seems to be alright though, Team Rocket left him alone, and he even gives me the Poke Flute so I can wake up Snorlaxes. So that's what we do next, we beat up a big fatty and clear the way for Jasmine. She tells me to come to Fuchsia City so I can go and challenge Koga. But we have quite a long road to go, and this road was not without any events. First, Goldos evolved into Krodos, a really cool looking form of Gyarados and Crobat. The only thing that I don't really like is its mouth. We also ran into a trainer that had Mr. Sir, a thing that could come straight out of a creepypasta. Please get it out of here. I hope I didn't give anybody nightmares with that one. But we also found our next poison type, Roselia, and I think Roserade can definitely turn some Pokemon really fancy. Eventually, we come at the end of the long road and reach Fuchsia City and head straight to Koga's gym. Poison type gym leader versus poison type trainer. Let's see who comes out on top. Well, since we have the advantage here as we have psychic types on our team, we can start out with Abra and take out Venomer with a single psychic. His Magnafin goes down the same way as it took its electric type, not steel type, from Magnemite. His Beether was very strong and withstood a psychic and even countered back with a pin missile. And if said pin missile would have hit five times, Abra would have been down. Another psychic makes him come to his end, and the last Pokemon on his team is a Chanug that's eating an egg. And for one more psychic with Abra, but that didn't take it out, and I didn't want to take the risk by going down next turn, so I gave Hermion some time to shine by finishing it off with one last psychic. Five gym badges in my pocket, time to go to the Safari Zone. And here I found some really cool Pokemon like Starters, even a Spiritomb. And after picking up the HM for Surf, I even found an entire new section. It seems to function like a desert, and it even has an entire desert temple. Which I wasn't able to explore because I didn't have enough steps, but there might be some treasures hidden in there. After getting out of the Safari Zone, I fused my Roselia with a Cradley to create the ultimate plant. It doesn't really look that good, but Roselia wasn't really compatible with a lot of things. I then took the bike route and took on the other Snorlax, but this time I actually captured it so I could fuse it with something else. Before doing so, I went to Silphco because Team Rocket is once again up to no good. This time, before you can enter the top floor, you're going to have to save all the people out of the building building so that the scientist at the top will let you through and give you that free Lapras that you're hoping for. And this time there's an actual Pokeball producing machine because that's what Silphco is known for. So that definitely adds to the atmosphere of the game too. Before I challenged Giovanni and my rival to more battles, I really wanted a full overhaul of my team. So I defused everything and gathered all the Pokemon I had captured. So I could create the coolest Pokemon possible. The first Pokemon I fused was Gyarados together with Arbok. But I didn't really like what I saw, so I reversed the fusion, and this guy looks way cooler. As for Crobat, he's now together with Absol to form Crosol. Definitely not the coolest thing out there, but it's going to be very powerful with a ton of speed and attack. Muk finally found a good host together with Snorlax, but it's still not really what I'm looking for with Muk. I straight up killed Valplume by fusing it with Spiritomb. I had to fuse Septa with Nidoqueen, even though they don't look as good. Nidoqueen just really doesn't seem to look great fusing with anything. I found a really cool Victory Bell fusion together with Kofagrigus, but Victory Bell's final form only came when I fused it with Salamence to create Salabelle. And with all of these new additions, I went back to Sylphco and challenged Bakugo. First up was Ardos versus his Nidojot. Only two Aqua Tails managed to seal the deal. But his Tauros came out next, who was a little bit too strong, so he took me out and I had to bring in Yagi. With just two acrobatics, Tauros was also down. But then his Electados came out, a really cool looking fusion and I wish I could use it myself, but instead I'm just going to have to take it out with two cross poisons. Starbot didn't survive a single Sucker Punch, and his last Pokemon, Warsour, once again went down to a Cross Poison or two. And that's Bakugo defeated once again, but this time he doesn't actually leave Silphco. Nope, he decides to barge in, and I follow him so that we can take on Giovanni together in a double. 
double battle. He starts out with a Primarino and a Rhyras, and our Nidoqueen Septal Fusion together with Nidojot are up against them. I was focusing on the Rhyras with my Mega Drains while Nidojot took down the Primarino. But then we see his final form of Kangaskhan called Gankan, a very menacing looking fella that took down Nidojot pretty quickly. Luckily I was able to take down the other Mon and then Sand Queen came out. Finally a good looking Nidoqueen fusion. Together they easily took down my rival's Electodose and I decided to bring in Ardos with its Intimidate so that they won't hit as hard anymore. My rival also brought in Tauros with Intimidate so they should be crippled. But the Sand Queen was only using Earth Power as special move. So every single turn I had to swap in another member of my team because I wanted to keep casualties at a low. While Tauros took down the Ginkhan, the Sand Queen was easily wiping out most of my Pokemon eventually even killing Twist the Spiritomb Vileplume. Then I could safely bring in Shaggy who could then leave Blade Sand Queen and get her out of here to win my battle against Giovanni. But as it turns out we're already too late, they managed to snatch 3 Master Balls from this place which is enough to fulfill their plans. And we can't go after them because we have no idea where they're going so we just have to continue our gym grind. But for our 6th gym battle we're facing a formidable opponent, Sabrina with her psychic types. which is definitely not something my team wants to face. Which is what you might think, but we have a dark poison type on the team now. And I showed Sabrina that she was absolutely no match for me. I sort of sensed up on her first Pokemon Hitmine, but she Batum passed out into Alabro, which I could take out with a Sucker Punch. I also easily took down her Estreon with an Acrobatics, her really cool looking Genkazam with Acrobatics too, and I was hoping that I could use this myself since Gengar is part Poison type. But once that went down, her Hitmime came out again, another Acrobatics, another kill, another Gym Badge. Shortly after, I also found a Shiny Stone so I could evolve my Cradily Rose Raid Fusion into its final form, but that definitely didn't look good. So I used some more of my Wonder Trading tickets, and eventually I got a Flygon Nidoking Fusion. But I already have a Nidoking Fusion, so I won't allow my Myself to use this one. If I want to use it however, I just need to find a Flygon so I can fuse it myself. I then tried out some new Rose Raid fusions, but Blaze Raid definitely wasn't it. Go Raid looked decent, but also not really what I was looking for. One fusion later however, and By Raid came to be. A really cool Bisharp Rose Raid fusion that I'll gladly introduce to the team. I also got Nidonape by fusing Infernape with Nidoking, and then I tried some more Nido Queen fusions, but Nido is hard was absolutely atrocious, and Nido Buzz just looked really awkward. And probably the worst of all, Nido Free. Yeah, that's not it, Chief. But Nido Jot, my next fusion, looked really cool with its blue mane, so I decided to go with this. I finally found a Gengar somewhere in the grass too, but sadly enough, after trying to fuse it with literally everything in my box, it turns out Gengar will never retain its poison type. Which made me very sad because Gengar has a ton of really cool fusions, and I was really looking forward to using some of them. But I guess I'm going to have to do a ghost type run in the future then. But time to go back to the story. Let's head to Cinnabar Island and see what it has in store for us. The mansion's a little bit reworked now, but there isn't really any major differences there. Except in the basement where you can now find Blaine who gives you his key himself and explains a little bit about what happened here in the past with all of the experiments that took place. And if you interact with this machine, it says that it has scratch marks on the inside of it. That definitely seems to hint like a Mewtwo event. We didn't find any poison types anymore, so let's head straight to Blaine's gym. The start of the battle is against the Glue Dash. First I used Earth Power to check if it was actually a Poison type, but it's a Grass Fire type, so the turn after I went for Hurricane and just one shot at it. For Chardactyl I knew I wasn't able to stay in, so I swapped into King and went for the Aqua Tail which just easily took it down. Magdon came in and he managed to survive an Aqua Tail despite it being 4 times super effective all because of his Pasho Berry and with just a single drill run King also bit the dust. Shaggy then finished it off with Leaf Blade and for his last Pokemon 9-9 I swapped into Agua and went for the Earth Power to finish Blaine off once and for all. That is 7 gym badges acquired, only one more to go but we can't actually go to Giovanni yet because his team Rocket Grunts are attacking the local harbor. They stole a ship that was parked there and headed straight to Mount Ember. But there aren't any ships left for us to go and follow them, so we have to serve after them through the very dangerous currents that could swoop us away in a single second. 
It really isn't that dramatic, but it's basically a water maze. And if you manage to get through the entire thing, you end up at Mount Ember. But before we go and investigate there further, I wanted to do some extra fusions. First, I fused my Sceptile with Arbok to create Sebok, a really cool looking fusion, but not the one I went for. Then I fused Arbok with Feraligator to create Ferabok. Not as cool as the Sceptile fusion, so I reversed it and got Alligator. The single most menacing thing I managed to create in this run, so I knew I had to keep this man on the team. It's straight up nightmare fuel, but he's super strong. I really wanted to create a cool Beedrill fusion too and just took out my entire box and created a bunch of abominations that I didn't really want to use until I fused him with Charizard and created Chardrill, which was by far the best looking Beedrill fusion I've seen so far. So once he joined the team, I went back to Mount Timber and saw a ton of cutscenes with Giovanni's plans. As it turns out, he'd already captured Articuno and Zapdos, and now he threw his last Master Ball at Moltres. Once all three of them were under his control, he brought out his fusion machine and created the famous Zap Molkuno from the manga. And then he tries to strike you down with them. The battle is very much tipped against you, because it's basically a triple battle, but you can only use one Pokemon while Giovanni uses three legendaries. And taking one of them out isn't enough, you have to take down every head separately. Agua was only able to hit one hurricane on the middle Moltres and confuse it before already going down. Then I brought in Monkey to try and take down the Articuno form with Flare Blitz, but that wasn't enough. So he's down too. Chardrill then finally finished it off with Flare Blitz, so only two more heads to take down. I brought in Yogi and was able to even survive a turn after hitting a Sucker Punch. So the turn after, I just went for another one and took down the Moltres form. Only Zapdos left. And with three Dragon Claws from Shaggy and a couple of Thunderbolts from Zapdos, we finally defeated Zap. Mol Kuno. Giovanni can't believe what just happened, his entire plan ruined by a 17 year old, so he needs to leave and reflect upon his actions as he returns back to his gym and releases Zapdos, Articuno and Moltres back into the wild. We then on the other hand decide to challenge Moltres and capture him. After adding him to the deck's total, we step outside of the cave and our friends are there waiting for us. They give us an ice pick so that we can enter the Seafoam Islands as well as the key for the power plant. So if you wanted to, we could create Zapmonkuno ourselves, I guess. We then head back with our boat to the mainland and head straight to Viridian City. Before I took on Giovanni again, I went out into the grass to try and find some cool new Pokemon. And I definitely found something cool, alright? A shiny Gengar, which now also has a cool shiny form compared to its regular shiny. I really wanted to use Genji here, but there really wasn't that much I could fuse him with, only my poison types. And it didn't really fit well with many of them. Rose Ray didn't look as cool as I thought they would. Fusing it with Crobat looked decent, but not as good as the Crobat Absol fusion I have now. And I didn't really want to give up anybody else from my team, so I decided to fuse it with Muck instead. It's not the best looking fusion out there, but hey, this way I can use my shiny Gengar. So for now, let's go to Giovanni's gym and end his reign once and for all. He has a ton of ground types and I don't really have a lot to deal with that, so we're definitely in for a hard brawl. It started out with his right Piras against my Shaggy. Because of my Intimidate, he already couldn't do as much damage as he wants to. Add a 2-int that I then put into sleep with Sleep Powder, and Giovanni was already looking rough. But even a Leaf Blade didn't do half against his Rhyperas. And eventually, he woke up, healed up, and hit me with a Bulldoze, which made me slower than him. So to preserve Shaggy for later in the battle, I decided to swap out into my new Muck Fusion, Genji. This time I put it to sleep, but with Hypnosis, and hit it with three Psychics straight after to take it down. His Electa Trio then came out, which isn't the best thing for me to face right now, as he shocks my Genji from the face of the earth. I then brought in the only Pokemon that could do damage against this team, Dundee, but I got paralyzed turn 1 which is not good to face the rest of his team. I still managed to take the Electro Trio out with Surfs, but his Glissitar proved to be too much for Dundee. I tried to finish it off with a superpower from Agua, but that was totally not enough. So after getting put headfirst into the sand, I had to swap into Monkey. Monkey's close combat still didn't finish it off, so he also bit the dust. I was really glad that I preserved Shaggy for this moment though, because I could outspeed, take it out with Leaf Blade, and with absolutely no more problems at all, I could just sleep powder the next Pokemon Rylax and go for two more Leaf Blades to also take the Fatty down and his last team member, Gochamp, went down the same way. 
thank god the sleep powder, otherwise we definitely wouldn't have won this one. So I take my final gym badge proudly and go to Viridian Forest to capture Pony Rye. I definitely didn't capture this because I wanted the Ponyta, but after defusing it, I could definitely make some cool stuff with Dark Rye. First I tried to fuse him with Beedrill which looks really good, but I wanted to see what other mods could bring. Dark Plume also looked good, definitely the best Vile Plume fusion we've seen yet, but then it started to get juicier. Dark Raid was almost going to be my final pick, so I tried Dark Cuck, that wasn't it, and Dark Bug which looked a little bit too goofy to my liking, but the final contestant was definitely the best one. Dark Bell. This absolute powerhouse of a Pokemon will definitely stick with me to the end of the game, and is also my favorite fusion we've done in this game. I also tried to fuse Arbok with Salamence to create Salabok and Armance, and despite looking really good, I still wanted to keep the Fraligator Arbok fusion. We're done fusing for now, so let's head to Victory Road, but on our way there we get stopped by Bakugo again. He wants to test me one last time before challenging the league. He still hasn't learned and starts with the same Nidajot, but I have his counterpart. And after a couple of hurricanes, his goes down. We don't have a lot of health left, but we are still able to take down Taokyut, his next Pokemon as well as Maghorn with an Earthquake. He really isn't sending out these Pokemon in a very thought-out way. Even his Electodose decides to not take me out when I go for two Earth Powers, it just screeches me and dies. For his Stark Azam, however, I decided to swap out into Dark Bell and hit it with a couple of Ominous Winds and finish it off with Leaf Storm. Only one last Pokemon remaining, Blast Sour, so we go into Yagi, hit the Sword Stance, hit the Sucker Punch and take it out with Cross Poison. I think it's crazy this thing still hasn't fully evolved at level 53. He really wants to keep his ace until the final showdown in the league. So let's head over there. Victory Road has actually had an entire rework, you don't have to go through the badge checker thing anymore, and there's even this cool Charizard statue. There is still a ton of trainers you still have to face though, and you even have to go through a part of Johto, the Tojo Falls. There's even a trainer that has the Venus toys from the anime, which was obviously really cool to fight. But then we reach our goal, the Pokemon League is inside and we enter, but before we go and take it on, I defused everything in my boxes and tried every single fusion available to me. This took me a couple of hours to do, I think I fused about 300 Pokemon, maybe even more, but I'll just show you the 6 coolest ones I'll be taking into the battle with me. Our first battler is Muizard, a fusion of Muk and Charizard. A fire poison time that's definitely not going to take an earthquake very well. Secondly, Bidrill, the Bisharp Bidrill fusion, a poison dark type. A very hard hitter, but is also not going to take many hits. Dundee is going to stay on the team, that doesn't change. Gyarados makes a return, but this time combined with Nidoking, an amazing water poison type that's going to crush everything with its Intimidate and Dragon Dance. And Infernape has been swapped from Nidoking to Crobat to create Cronape. A really fast and strong physical attacker with probably my second favorite look in the game besides our next Pokemon, Dark Bell, that's also not going to change. So let's waste no more time and head straight into the battle with Lorelei. Nidodos was up against Magong. And after setting up some dragon dances and crunches, I was able to win this matchup, but I was also left burned, which meant that her Mambro next turn could easily just snatch me up. So I brought in Muizard instead and went for Flamethrower and Flare Blitz to destroy that slow mammoth. She then had a Weirass who hit me with a Surf, but I somehow survived, I guess this thing's special attack must be pretty bad, but my Flare Blitz once again took it out, but the recoil damage also finished off my Muizard. Then I set up a bunch of coils on Tentaster and proceeded to take it out with Earthquake, and while the last Pokemon Jingrowth was able to give me some trouble with Sleep Powder, it still couldn't take me out, and two Ice Fangs later won me the Lorelei battle. Let's move on to Bruno, normally the easiest Elite Form member in any run, but let's see if Fusion Pokemon can buff him up a bit. Starting out with a Mayfire and Electric Fighting type against my Dundee was not a good idea on my part. I got knocked out by Thunder Punch way too quickly, and Bidrill also couldn't do anything. Only one Poison Jab which really didn't do all that much. I brought in Nidodos who was able to kill him with a couple of Aqua Tails, but I also took some damage from Thunder Punch. His next Pokemon, Marochan, also took an Aqua Tail to the face, but got out of there before I could finish him off. His Seacross was pretty damn bulky as he took an Aqua Tail like a champ, 
and countered back with a close combat to take me out. Muizart then finished it off with Flare Blitz, just like the next Pokemon, Marochan. His Steed Champ, however, took a couple of flamethrowers to the face, but eventually we also managed to melt him down. Magnanix was the last one on his team, and with a couple more Flare Blitz, I eventually managed to wiggle it down until it hit a Zap Cannon and Iron Tail, taking down Muizard, so that Cronape had to finish this thing off with one last close combat. Bruno was definitely harder than normal, but let's see what Agatha has in store for us. First up is Mismabat. I try to go for the crunch with my Nidados, but it doesn't even do half, and I get wrecked by two Shadow Balls. So Dundee has to come in and finish it off with another one. Her Wobgar looks a little bit weird and was able to lay a curse on me but another crunch gave me another kill. Because of the curse I swapped out when she brought out her umter and I went into bidrill, I hit a ton of night slashes but she kept on healing up and eventually took me out with nightshade. Finally time for Cronape to shine, a flare blitz and an acrobatics later and Gendoon comes out to play. I hit another acrobatics but a shadow ball finally made my bat monkey die. Even Muizard's gunk shots couldn't finish it off so shadow balls got shot my way again and forced me to send out Dark Bell to psychic it up. She only had Snorgar left, so I put it to sleep with Hypnosis. Because of my bad dreams, I would do chip damage every turn, and eventually I could finish it off with one last Leaf Storm. Agatha defeated, but we only had like two Pokemon left again. But Lance the Dragon Master is our next opponent, and he isn't going to hold back, as it starts out with a majestic Dragados. I started out with Dundee, and once again set up a bunch of coils. I did get paralyzed, which is definitely not good for the rest of the battle, but I was eventually able to take down Dragados with a couple of earthquakes and crunches. Tokenite almost took me down, but luckily it's a fairy dragon type, so my earthquakes could still hit it, and because of my attack and defense boosts, I still came out on top in this matchup too. A super cool Tyrant Dactyl then finally put an end to my Dundee's Massacre, but not before I got in another hit. Cronape finished it off with Acrobatics, and his Porridrom was up next. A bad matchup for him because my close combat is super effective, but he managed to survive and counter back with Tri-Attack, which rendered my Cronape useless. Muizard's Sludge Wave finished it off just like the final Pokemon, Typhnair. Lance was surprisingly easy compared to the last two contenders, but let's see what Bakugo can bring to the table in our very last battle. And the answer is absolutely everything. My team got washed away so many times. I attempted this battle over 25 times, but my levels just weren't high enough. I mean, most of his team is like 10 levels higher than mine, so I guess I should have grinded up a bit more. So that's what I did. I went out, grinded a bunch more, and challenged him again. But I might have leveled up a little bit too much, because I only needed one Pokemon to take down his entire team. I set up two Dragon Dances on his first Pokemon Nidojot, and then finished it off with a single Aqua Tail. Rife Mortar was also an easy one-shot with Aqua Tail, considering it's four times super effective, of course. Tautor is part Psychic type, and also cut my attack in half again with Intimidate. So I set up another Dragon Dance and then took it out with a Mega Horn. For his next Pokemon, Electidose, I decided to use Baneful Bunker, which I got from a Move Tutor somewhere, to poison him. Luckily for me, he just kept on using Full Restores after that, so my Aqua Tails could finish off this really cool looking Mon. Starkazam only took one Mega Horn, and then we get to see his final starter form, Blast Sour. A really strong looking Pokemon, but still couldn't stand up to a single Mega Horn from Nidodos. And with that, we have defeated Pokemon Infinite Fusion with only poison types. But do keep in mind that there is a full second region, you can also explore the Johto region. So if you'd like to see a second part, maybe with a different type where I run through the Johto region, let me know in the comments down below. I certainly enjoyed playing through this game. It's so much fun fusing the Pokemon together and seeing what you get. And it absolutely helps that most of the sprites also look so good. If you're still watching, let me know what your favorite fusion in this video was, for me it was probably Dark Bell. But for now I'm going to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated but not needed. And with all of that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.